Good afternoon. My name is Lorraine, and we welcome all of you to St. Alphonsus Liguori Parish to celebrate our confirmation liturgy. Our celebrant for this Mass is Bishop Jeffrey Grob. God promises that those who gather in Jesus' name will find God in their midst. As we come together in this special celebration today, let us truly seek to be more aware of God's presence among us, to reflect on that presence and that God's presence is powerful, and to pray that we will experience in our hearts an abundance of grace, mercy, and peace. We respectfully ask that you silence your cell phones and please keep your masks on during your entire stay in the building. Our opening song will be found in the blue gather books in your pews, number 552, Send Us Your Spirit, number 552. Please stand. <laughs> the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure to be able to be with you this afternoon to celebrate here at St. Alphonsus the Sacrament of Confirmation, to be able to come into your lives as a parish community, as a number of you make another step, if you will, to claiming what is your birthright claiming what is yours by virtue of what you've been baptized into. It's not somebody else now standing up and saying, you're going to do this. It's you standing up yourself and saying, I'm going to do it. Not easy. Always a challenge. But conscious that we're not in this race alone. That with the help of God, we are renewed and fortified. And so as we begin this liturgy, we go back to the moment where we all started this race in the reality of holy baptism. And so we bless now the water and are sprinkled again with that encounter of the living God in the saving waters of baptism. And so my dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty Lord and God, who are the source and origin of all life, whether of body or soul, we ask you to bless this water which we use in confidence to implore forgiveness for our sins and to obtain the protection of your grace against all illness and every snare of the enemy. Grant, O Lord, in your mercy that living waters may always spring up for our salvation, and so may we approach you with a pure heart and avoid all danger to body and soul. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people yep. of good will. Let us pray. Graciously pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, O Lord, so that walking in oneness of faith and strengthened by the power of his love, we may come to the measure of the full stature of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygia and Pamphia, Egypt and the districts of Libria near Cyrene, as well as travelers from Rome both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, 
and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body, is one, though it has many parts. All the parts of the body, though many, are one body. So also Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons. And we were all given to drink of one spirit. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. you and with your spirit the gospel reading according to John on the evening of that first day of the week when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them peace be with you when he has said this he showed them his hands and his side the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, who since you forgive are forgiven them, and who sin you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop Rob, I present to you the following candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation. Amanda Elizabeth Alp Elbridge. Karina Catherine Els, Frank Stephen Bond, Grace Catherine Bott, Prince Sebastian Koller, Samantha Christina Cook, Carter Jude Kramasuli. Sean Joseph Dapper, Dapper, Nico Monica Dash, Kylie June Delfos, Sophia Cecilia Fomina, John Peter Gatter, Brenna Patrice Hardiman, Elizabeth Mary Hedrich, Isabel Gemma Hinman, Julian Catherine Jacob, Maxwell Sebastian Kars, Tyler John Lang, Lini Emma Lisa. Nora Elizabeth Lochner, Emma Elizabeth Lawrence, Nathan Michael Murray, Tia Veronica Matanovic, Gabriela Nona Milazzo, Murray Denise. Demfna Monaka, Nico Victoria Montebano, James Jones Moyer, Keenan Albert Nguyen, 
Samantha Cecilia Noto, Isabella Mary Oziki, Elaine Monica Pollum, Mackenzie Jean Potling, Dominic Nicholas Poplar, Raymond Sebastian Reyes, Kayla Sebastian Santaford, Grant John Sherman, Dan Anthony Smith, Henry George Snacky, Sebastian Michael Zumski, Catherine Thompson, and Michael Cecilia Wallace. Take a breath and have a seat. Relax, sit down. On May 23rd of this year, it was a feast of Pentecost, and actually I had the privilege of standing in this very same church uh, at the invitation of Father Joe, and we celebrated a few confirmations uh, that day, but we get the the bulk of the, of the group today, so it's a privilege to be back with you to celebrate this sacrament uh, in a very special way, uh, to be part of this community here in, in Mount Prospect. Um, I don't know if, if you've ever had the experience, as you read through scripture, uh, over the years myself, you get to different passages and you say, well, I wonder why this particular factoid was contained in the particular story that's told, right? You always wonder, well, you know, why maybe, you know, not too many Sundays ago, you know, we were hearing about, you know, five barley loaves and two fish or so many number of days or whatever the case may be. What, what's the significance of it? I mean, we get the general gist. We know the, we want to know the, the you know, the important facts of each of the, of, the, of the passages of Scripture, but why certain ones? And it's haunted me, the gospel that we just heard. You know, it's Easter Sunday, the first Easter Sunday, and the Lord comes into the midst of the fear of the infant church. It was the apostles. That's it, folks. You know, I mean, that's all there was. You know, there weren't, you know, dioceses. There weren't all this infrastructure. There was just simply the apostles. The last time... You know, the, the, they saw the Lord, he was, he was hung on a tree. And all of a sudden, he's standing in their midst. And he says, peace be with you. No doubt they probably needed those words, trying to figure out, okay, what exactly is going on here? Because they were struggling with their own belief, huh? Even at that point, everything that he had said to them up to that point and yet they took him away and they nailed him. And the last time, at least even fewer of them, saw him carted off to, to, the, to the tomb. Um, but then comes the line. He's peace be with you. He says it twice. And in fact, I have the privilege of saying that to those of you who will be confirmed. As soon as you're confirmed, I have the honor of, of smearing sacred chrism on your forehead and saying be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and then immediately there's this exchange. Peace be with you. Going back to the gospel, then what comes next? When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Okay, so what's about that? Certainly lots of theological ink has been spilled over the years trying to figure out what exactly the purpose of that motion, that instant. Why was it so important to show his hands? Still withholds and his side, wounded, pierced. I suspect 
he was presenting his credentials. Wouldn't you think, Son of God, raised from the dead, don't you think it would have made more sense for him to come back whole? But yet, he retained, and even we see that elsewhere in, in the book of Revelation. It talks about the Lamb, referencing Jesus Christ, still marked with the sign, marked with the signs, the markings of execution. He retains those even in eternity. Their credentials. Just in case you ever wonder how much we are loved by God, here you go, folks. I love you to this extent and to this end. And I always will. At no point do I ever stop loving you. Today we gather for the sacrament of confirmation. I can hazard a guess that most of you who are sitting with the name tags or the confirmation stoles, not too many of you remember your baptism, do you? Is that a safe bet? Probably a lot of the other folks sitting in the pews probably don't have a real clear remembrance of their own baptism, huh? But we know what happened there, right? We know that others stood in our place. We were carried, kicking and screaming, some pablum probably running out, whatever the case may be. And we were brought to a font by someone else. Parents, godparents, grandparents, family, perhaps some of the same folks that are sitting next to those who are to be confirmed today, some of the same family may be sitting with you now that saw you back then, were the ones that were responsible for carrying you to the font, who said, yes, we want our beloved daughter, our beloved son to be baptized, to become a Christian. And certainly the ritual, I mean, we won't go into great detail, but we know that water was blessed, prayers were offered, and promises were made. People spoke on our behalf, those on behalf of the person being baptized, that you would live a certain way. You'd be raised in a certain tradition, a faith that's grounded in a belief that Light overcomes the darkness. God the Father Almighty, Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, the Holy Spirit coming, the church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection from the dead and life everlasting. Somebody else made those promises for you. This is the key moment, though, now. Because in a few moments, those of you with the, the nice name tags are going to stand up. And it is a moment for you. No one else is going to stand up. No one else is going to speak in your name or on your behalf. It's now your turn to stand up for yourself and state what you believe. It's not magic. It's not a get out of jail free card. It's not something that's gonna make all of life easy and perfect and flawless. It's going to be a trust an act of trust, and an act of faith that what you have received, you are willing to claim for yourself. 
to say, I do believe in God the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, in the forgiveness of sin, in the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. But I ask you, like I ask every couple <laughs> before I marry them, when they're standing at the kneeler before God and before we begin the vows, I say, this is your last chance. Think about what you're doing. We can stop right here. No foul, no nothing, you're all this good. Are you sure, to the best of your ability, at this moment, that this is what you want to do? Because I'm not going to know. You can come up and say all kinds of things to me. You can say all kinds of things to your family, your parents, your godparents, your grandparents, your siblings. You can say all kinds of things to them. But the promises you're making are to the one who hung on the tree. I won't know what's in your heart, nor will anyone of your family, but God will. And again, it's a moment by which you set the course of your days going forward. Do you believe? I invite everybody else in the pews that won't be talking or won't be responding to take this moment as well. What do you believe? We're in this together. I know as we've heard that line mantra over and over again during this COVID time. But this is something that's going to carry us through beyond COVID. In your daily living, wherever you find yourself, at home, at work, at play, what do you believe? What does your faith mean to you? We pray, I pray, personally, that the Holy Spirit will come upon you in power to enliven your faith, to give you courage, to give you hope in a world that can be so confused and so dark. That's my prayer for you. I please ask your prayers for me too just because I get to wear the pointy hat and the red vestments. I need them as much as you do. We keep each other in prayer and faith. But in a profound way, I ask God's blessing upon each of you with the name tags today. Please take seriously and continue the conversation with the Lord until you see him face to face in eternity. And so those who are to be confirmed, I ask you to please stand. Before you receive God's Holy Spirit, call to mind the faith which your parents and godparents professed in the Catholic Church. And so I ask you, I ask you personally, if I had the chance, I would come to each of you and ask each of these questions. Here they are. Do you renounce Satan and all his works? 
and all his empty promises. Want to try that one more time? Do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? Uh, you're with me. That's a start. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church? the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. My friends, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. And so, dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Father Almighty for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these, your servants, to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord.
these stand. Conscious that the risen Lord is in our midst, we now give voice to our prayers of petition. For those who are confirmed today, that by the gift of the Spirit, they may give witness to Christ by willingly using their talents and strengths to benefit others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents and sponsors of our confirmandi, that they will continue to share their faith with these young people, encouraging them to be all that Christ is calling them to be. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that it will always extend God's peace, mercy, and love to those who are most vulnerable and in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people of every race and nation, that they will be guided by the Holy Spirit to respect the dignity of every person. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor, homeless, and refugees, that their needs will not be forgotten or ignored by the world around them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have been victimized by war and violence, for families split apart, those who have suffered the loss of loved ones, those suffering from the effects of discrimination, that the Spirit will show us the true way to peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and all who suffer, that they will know God's care for them and presence to them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our St. Alphonsus Liguori Parish community, that we open ourselves to the transforming message of the gospel and heed the call of Christ to serve him and one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I invite you now just through a moment of silence to bring your own personal needs to God. For the needs of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. God of all creation, in you we place our hope and trust. Hear our prayers that in listening to your word and feasting at your table, we may be strengthened to do your will now and always. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you very much.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept graciously these, your servants, O Lord, together with your only begotten Son, so that signed with his cross with a spiritual anointing, they may constantly offer themselves to you in union with him and merit each day a greater outpouring of your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you bestow gifts suited to every season and guide the governing of your church in wonderful ways. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you come unfailingly to her aid, so that with a heart always subject to you, she may never fail to seek your help in time of trouble, nor cease to give you thanks in time of joy. And so in the company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we now proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Blaise, our Archbishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saint Alphonse, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art Which in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, our trespasses as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and of glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of this, your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share that peace with those around us. Many blessings. Is there a... Yeah, if you try, I will take you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who came to take away the sin of the world. Happier those of us to be called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Thank you, sir. Instruct, O Lord, in the fullness of the law, those you have endowed with the gifts of your spirit and nourished by the body of your only begotten Son, that they may constantly show to the world the freedom of your adopted children and by the holiness of their lives exercise the prophetic mission of your people through Christ our Lord. I would like to take the opportunity to say thank you uh, some important people who help prepare our uh, team today to, for them to receive confirmation. First of all, I would like to say thank you Mrs. Ann Bozato and Mrs. Susan Panic and all the catechists. I know you make a, an extra mile uh, to work hard to prepare our, our team for this special day. I also say thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mike Blatt. You uh, have spent some, a lot of efforts to uh, give our, our team to special formation sections before they receive the confirmation. I also say thank you, my staff and all, all the ministers uh, all the servers and musicians who help make this uh, special confirmation mass uh, very meaningful and joyful. And um, I would like to say thank you all the parents. I know through the pandemic, it takes you a lot of effort and patience to continue to support and encourage your, your child to move forward to this special day when they take uh, a, uh, a big step in their life to say yes to the Lord, to receive the Holy Spirit, to take the ownership of their faith. And thank you very much for keep your promise when the day you brought their, your child to be baptized Priest or deacon asks you, do you promise to continue to bring your child to learn more about church, to receive the sacrament? And you say yes. And today, you did that. You fulfilled that, that, that promise. But it doesn't mean that you're done with your children, right? So I encourage you to continue to support and encourage your children because they continue to live with you for a few more years. And the, the, the last but not least is we cannot have the, the Mass today without the bishops. Bishop Rob, since you became the vicar here, I feel a strong support from you, and especially when I ask you anything to come here to confirm our children, and you always say yes. So thank you very much for being a good and faithful vicar for our parish. So how about we put together all and I would like to have a few words to our our confirmandi today. Like I said to your parents, their job as a parent is not done yet. It is the same with you, it's not done with your faith, with your church yet. It means that after today you take the ownership of your faith. It means that you will go to church, you practice your faith without waiting for anyone to push you to tell you what to do. Right? So I hope that the Holy Spirit that you receive today continue to work in you so you will become a strong Christian and a good people in our society. Thank you. Always the one that does the thanking is usually the one that is always left off the list of being thanked. So also a word of thanks to Father Joe for all of his leadership here at the parish, for all that he does for this faith community. So thank you to you as well. And just my own quick word of thanks. Again, like I said at the beginning of Mass, thank you for the opportunity to be able to come into your lives to celebrate where we are at our best, hopefully, is when we gather at the Lord's table. 
and whatever we learn and what we take from here, we bring to a waiting world. So my continued prayers for all of you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless each of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. We go in peace. Thanks be to God. And as we go forth, please join in singing number 557, Send Down the Fire, number 557. students, if you would come to the front. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if everyone could come to the front, we're going to take a picture and then our bishop will come back up.